Hi, everyone. Welcome to your class about the Energy Almanac and the astrological insights and the holistic resources that you need to know for the year, the half year ahead. Um, I am your host of your class tonight. I'm I am Tam and Tam I am. Tam Veyu is my last name. I am a holistic so success coach. I live and love in the beautiful state of Maine. And I am the creator of the Energy Almanac. And the Energy Almanac is your resource for astrology and holistic resources. So tonight, in this class, we are going to talk about the energies coming up astrologically for the next several months. I am going to actually um, cue you in. I think the best thing that you can know about this class is you definitely want to have pen and paper. So if you didn't come to your computer with pen and paper while I'm introducing myself, I want you to go quickly, grab something to write with, and we, you're going to want to take notes because there's there's so much to know about what's coming up for 2019. And while you're getting paper, I want to tell you a little bit about myself and about the Energy Almanac. Um, as I said, I'm a, I'm a coach and I'm actually a creative. I'm an artist and I'm an illustrator who has had a mad passion for astrology for a very, very long time. I actually grew up in a household where we talked about astrology off and on here and there. Um, as I became an adult and was raising children, I, I paid attention a little bit, but over the last, I'll say five years, I became, became more deeply interested in what it meant for me to be a Virgo. And over the last two years, what does it mean to be a Virgo with a Sagittarius rising or, and a Taurus moon? Like, what does all of that mean? And I've been actively digging into astrology at a deeper level over these last 24 months. Well, during that, those 24 months, I actually got a niggling from the universe, so to speak, to create a book that would marry astrology and the natural resources that one might use in order to handle the energies that the astrology would create during the course of their movement. So I was able to pull together a wonderful, powerful collection of experts in their fields who actually joined me to collaborate on this book. So I'm the publisher and I'm the main collaborator in a piece of work where you can learn exactly what's going to go on month by month in an actual month by month view in the book. I want to actually show you quickly each month of this book, you get a high overview with a piece of art that tells you exactly what to do and what not to do for every single month. And I'm going to actually jump right off by telling you about the month of June 2019. So I hope you got your pen and paper because I'm going to share with you that the month of June has a whole lot of Neptune in it. So things are not so clear. If you have found June to be a little bit confusing, well, you are surely not alone because Neptune is about water and about emotions and um, imagination and things that are not necessarily of this world, we'll say. And so things are a little bit confusing during the month of June. I know that I found that to be true uh, in my own life. And so an, another aspect that's actually in play during June is also Gemini. So if you are a Gemini, go ahead and raise your hand. If you are a Gemini, then you know that's a lot about uh, communication. And so marry Neptune with Gemini, Neptune being the murkiness and the confusion and some things are imagination and some things are with your communication of Gemini and you know that communication is not going to be very clear. And I have found that to be so true. Now, if you're watching this masterclass, feel free to drop your comments or your questions into the chat box. And I have somebody who is monitoring that for me and we'll try to get to your questions if they show up. So the month of June, things aren't quite so clear. Um, you want to be aware of that and you want to watch your words. And 
a good idea, a good step that you want to take would be to uh, literally wait for clarity before you do anything too drastic this month. Now, the, the big piece of information that I really want to share about the month of June is about Monday. Coming up on June 17th is the supermoon. Now, a supermoon is when a moon is very, very close to the Earth, and it appears much, much bigger than it actually is. And this supermoon is going to be in the zodiac sign of Sagittarius. Now, Sagittarians are all about truth-telling and optimism. So during this, um, during this Monday super moon, we really want you to look into the future and look at that future with optimism. Um, the Sagittarian personality is always about, oh, they always see the bright side of things. They're very um, philosophical by nature. They're very chatty. They're always going to tell it like it is. And you might feel that energy arise on Monday. Go ahead and lean toward that. You really, on Monday, want to entertain new ways of putting yourself out into the world. If you've always been in this little container, this little box, you had this idea of how you should show up, this is a great time on Monday to sort of do some journaling, do some writing, and find out how you can show up differently in the world. Now, by the way, if you love that little tidbit and you kind of understand where I'm going with this information, I want you to know the entire Energy Almanac is written so that you know exactly what to do and ask exactly what to avoid on a month-by-month -month basis. So that information about the supermoon is available to you in the Energy Almanac. Now, I'm going to go through the next six months and give to each of you in the next six months the information that you need to know. I noticed that there's some people joining this call. Welcome to all of you. Um, I'm going to give you a chunk of information about each of the months that are coming up, as well as the essential oil that you can use to either amplify the energies or to abate the energies that are going to be active, okay? I think that's um, some really good information. And that's only part of what is available to you in the Energy Almanac because um, there's actually yoga poses, the gemstone that you can use, the numerology that is at play, as well as all the do this, don't do that, watch this date, pay attention over here, all that kinds of tidbits of information for you to look at in the Energy Almanac. So uh, I want you to know that this whole project, the Energy Almanac, and bringing to the planet uh, a, a work of words and a work of art that provides insight astrologically was kind of a divinely given suggestion. It was intuited that this should be a book that the world would want. And so I took a leap of faith. I invited in writers who specialized in their fields to participate in a project that I hoped would affect the masses, that I hoped people could latch onto so they could finally start to understand astrology at a deeper level. Many, many people can say, oh, I'm a cancer. I'm born under the sign of Leo. Oh, I'm born under the sign of Aquarius. But they don't really understand what that means in the bigger picture. And so this book is a catalog of information all about astrology, the signs, the zodiac signs, and also the planets and what each of those planets mean. Now, if you've ever heard somebody say, Mercury is retrograde. Well, it sounds interesting to understand that communication is a problem and technology might be a problem during the Mercury retrograde, but to fully understand what the planet Mercury actually represents is, is really you up-leveling your understanding of astrology and that's what the energy almanac is about it's all about this opportunity for you to really know how all of the planets and all of the and the zodiac signs are at play and then you take this information and you connect the dots in your own life you start looking at how is saturn 
uh, how is the planet Saturn affecting me? What is the planet Venus doing to me right now? When you know those things ahead of time, making decisions becomes so much easier. So, so much easier. Now, speaking of those planets, I want to let you know that for 2019, get your pen and paper out. For 2019, we have four major planets at play. This is really a very, very big year uh, for creating shifts in our planet. So one thing that we have going on is Jupiter in Sagittarius. So Jupiter is the planet of expansion. And Jupiter is a very um, benevolent planet. It's a very feel-good planet. And it's in the sign of Sagittarius. Sagittarius, we just talked about a little bit, uh, not a little bit, a lot, very optimistic, very hopeful, very uh, talkative. So you're going to see a lot of communication around hope and around optimism and or the breakdown of those, the breakdown of hope. Now, remember, astrology are not absolutes, they're potentials. And that's what I really do want to remind you. These are potentials that can happen. So don't get overly worried. And also, don't get overly optimistic. You want to maintain some balance as you take in all of the information this evening. Now, uh, Saturn is the other large planet that is at play. S Saturn uh, does manage agriculture and time and tasks. So you might feel this deep urge to be looking at those areas of your life. You might feel like time is slipping through your fingers. You might feel the need to really get very task oriented this year in 2019. Um, and the other one is Capricorn, which is also at play in 2019. And Capricorn is a very driven planet. If you're born under the sign of Capricorn, from what I understand, Capricorn karmically means at one point in your soul's blueprint, you may have been a king or a queen. You are a ruler. You're a, a taskmaster and you know how to put things into place to make things happen. So Capricorn, Jupiter, um, Saturn are the three planets that are at play and you will feel those effects this year for sure. Now, um, cautious risk taking is a major theme for this year. So look, if you're thinking about expanding your business, do so, do so, do so cautiously. Take the risk, be very measured in how you take that risk. Um, because there are two other words that are at play this, this year, and I find them very, very interesting. They are conservatism and stewardship. Now, if you think about that word conservatism and your resources, what are your resources? Time, money, health, and relationship. Those are your four major resources, and you want to be conservative with them. Cautious risk-taking, and conservatism are the words that you really, really want to remember for 2019. And toward the end of this year, I would say for the fourth quarter of 2019, stewardship becomes the new word. And that's where you're really, I like to do this when I'm saying stewardship, like you wanna keep them a little bit close to the best, steward carefully. You are the owner of your resources and you need to farm them out very, very carefully. So keep that in mind, conservatism for the current wave. And then maybe by October, we're gonna, maybe November, start looking towards stewardship, okay? Super, okay. So starting with super moon on Monday, you're gonna dig into seeing the future optimistically. How can I entertain new ways of showing up in my life? And that's you looking at your personal life as, as well as your work life, okay? Now, uh, by the way, I want to mention that the essential oil that you should use to temper the energies of the murkiness of June, the two essential oils that are recommended by our very talented essential oil writer, her name is Starla Perico, um, spearmint, which is for communication, and clary sage, which is to nurture the intuition. 
So if you are an essential oil person, I highly recommend that you top those oils up this month. Um, I want to make a caveat. Always use your essential oils very, very carefully. Make sure you uh, do your homework around safe use of essential oils, okay? So spearmint and clary sage are exactly what you want to lean into. And here is a little um, affirmation that you want to use for the month of June. I communicate with an open heart and an open mind, okay? Great, there is the month of June for you. Luckily, we have six more months to cover and I will, I don't wanna keep everybody here for hours on end, although I could joyfully talk about this for hours on end. Um, everybody has other things to do. So I'm gonna share with you what's coming up for the next six months. Let's go into July, get that pen and paper um, ready. I want to share with you that the month of July has six opposing planets. This is a really challenging month. And the word that I'm sort of leaning into for July is nostalgia. Uh, you may be feeling very, very longing for the old days. You may feel extremely nostalgic. I recommend that you take the time to perhaps visit a location that is familiar to you um, that brings back those warm and fuzzy memories for you. The good old days are going to be in at the top of mind during the month of July. Um, and there is going to be a lot of actual heart intelligence available to you. I just knocked on my chest and I'm reminded that I am wearing the beautiful um, aroma, oh my goodness, I can't remember the name of the necklace. It's, an, it's available at Oil Life, it's an aroma necklace. And I have these two lava beads that I've bought. I tonight have put lavender oil on because lavender is one of my very favorite scents. So I think this is a really nice accent. I want to share that. Um, so heart intelligence is available this month. Make sure you're listening from your heart, not from up here. As much as possible moving forward into 2019 and also 2020, we want to be coming less from this thing and much more from this space. So look, it's going to be a super hot summer, a very, very hot summer. The theme is healing and nurturing for the month of July. So be thinking about that. And healing and nurturing are your sort of topics that you want to be on top of. Uh, we do have a lunar eclipse coming up in the month of July. And I want to share with you that the essential oils, pardon me for looking down, the two essential oils that you want to look at are myrrh. I'm going to put my glasses on. This will be much easier. <laughs> um, you're going to, you want to pick up myrrh, which is for trust and for nurturing. And also the very familiar joyful blend, which um, is obviously going to help rise those beautiful nurturing feelings that you're going to naturally feel anyway. So, um, if you are into yoga, by the way, yoga poses are in the energy almanac, but I want to tell you my favorite pose is the one that is recommended for the month of July. And that one is child pose. Child pose is a very, very restorative yoga pose. So do that so that you can capture yourself, uh, re rebalance yourself and sort of rest into the energies that are going to be at play. I hope I'm not going too fast. I hope your pens are furiously writing across your journals. I'm gonna continue right into the month of August. And the month of August, we find the planet Jupiter, which had been retrograde, had been slowing down in the sky, is now going to begin um, moving forward. And the planet Uranus, which is the planet of surprise, is begin going to begin to go retrograde. So August, the words that our fabulous astrologer Janet Hickox has talked about in the book is smooth sailing. What a great title, right? Smooth sailing. So this August of 2019 is a kind of turning point for humanity. There's going to be quite a lot of 
outer world growth going on. And it's a, it's a true turning point in evolution. Um, I'm going to give you a little red flag warning right here. Pay attention to um, maybe financial red flags going off. Watch for some red alerts in the financial world. Remember that astrology is not absolutes, it's potentials. So keep that in mind. Um, you will see some rebalancing of the male-female energies. I think you remember that last fall in the United States of America, we certainly came up and we bumped head with uh, male and female energies, right? With the, where there was some big stuff going on in politics with the uh, Kavanaugh and Ford trial that went head to head for the Supreme Court position. That was Mars square Venus. That entire situation was Mars actively in the sky squaring Venus, which means they come head to head and they, they're trying to outdo each other. They're trying to vie for position. You might feel a little tug of that in during the month of August. Um, looking at my notes here there's another very powerful super moon that's coming up during the month of august and that por that portal that super moon is going to be very very important that you focus very very carefully on what it is you want and that super moon will be in the sign of virgo which means it's all about cleaning the clutter take the time during the august super moon to get things really cleaned up, um, looking for a really organized position to be in. And um, because it's Virgo, it's also that very holistic uh, point of view. A Virgo person by, by nature is, is very holistic. All right, so we have a couple of essential oils that you can use during the month of August. And the first one is lime. Now lime is extremely uplifting and will bring you to a place of emotional authenticity. And I am actually a success coach, really focused in on the emotions that keep a person from being successful. Um, I know that if you're not showing up authentically, emotionally, then you will be held back from your sh being your best self in business. Um, if you're that person like myself, very, very, I'll say high on life and very willing to laugh with joy and cry with joy and clap my hands with excitement. That is my authentic emotions showing up. If you're the person who feels you have to <clears throat> tamp it down and not show your enthusiasm or your sadness, your grief, your anger, that's where you might end up with a little problem. So use this essential oils that is lime and bring yourself into that emotional authenticity. The other one that is recommended for August is the cellular complex. And so this is to bring um, cellular integrity to your body. Uh, this is for balance and also for flow. So there you go with your essential oils. Um, a nice word to lean into for the month of August is the word harmonize. What a beautiful word, right? So how can I be the energy of harmony in August? Take a look at that question. Ask it of yourself repeatedly during the month and lean in on it. Lean in on that. Okay. So the next month is September. The month of September, the headline that our astrologer wrote is, don't be fooled, be prepared. So September numerologically is the month number nine, right? August is the eighth month, September is the ninth month. So the, the ninth month, September, is typically about wrapping things up. A nine is about uh, fruition. It's the, the coming together and the closing and the, the wrapping things up of whatever it was that you were just building on. Now, uh, the month of September astrologically 
has a lot going on. We are in what we call a stellium. Astrologically, there's, there's much at play. There are three grand trines and four T squares going on in the sky. That's a lot of planetary action. And so during the month of September, you may see fruition of your dreams and your goals. You may see the coming together of, I'll call it the culmination of the inner work that you've been doing. In the month, uh, excuse me, in the year of 2019, we really highly recommended that you lean into a spiritual practice for the entire year. If you've never been one to meditate, this is the year to start that practice. If you've never been one to get quiet and listen to the inner voice, this is the year to do that. Prayer this year. Whatever your version of spirituality is, this is the year to really lean in there. And so in September, you may see the reward of having done that kind of work. It may be that you're the one who is the um, calm during chaos. You may be the, the ship that is smooth sailing while other ships are loosey goosey and all over the place. Um, September does have a lot of planetary movement. So you want to really look to um, find the practical energy and lean there. Virgo, practical, organized energy and use that as sort of your landing point. Um, the fall equinox, of course, is in September. We'll go We'll go into that fall equinox. The, the other super moon of the fall is going to be in September. So um, super moons, I think they typically happen 30 days apart. And the second super moon will be at the end of September. There was one at the end of August and now the end of September. And that one will be around relationship. So um, a note from the numerologist in the Energy Almanac. She says that this coming September, the numbers add up to a three month in a three year. If you add up two plus zero plus one plus nine for the year 2019, it equals the number, it equals the number 12. Well, one plus two equals three, so it's a number three. 2019 resonates as a three, which means it's a very, very social year. And if you add September, the nine to 2019, you end up again with a three. So September, you may find yourself all over the place, visiting people, having company, going on day dates, going on night dates. It's going to be a very, very social month. So heads up for that. Okay. The one word that I would really want you to lean into for September is the word evolve. When you think about that word, it has a lot of, of meaning to it. So really think about evolving your thinking. I said, think about evolving your thinking. So how can I think elevated thoughts? What elevated actions would be appropriate for me at this time? And how can I demonstrate a more evolved point of view, okay? Now the two essential oils that I would recommend, or not that I would recommend, our very brilliant Starla Perico recommended wintergreen, which I know is a very potent essential oil. Um, wintergreen is recommended because it's kind of about surrender. Surrendering to what is, um, surrendering to that more evolved point of view that is going to happen almost whether you want it to or not. We are evolving as a, as a species, our, our humanness is evolving and we're, we're less about going head to head and we're more about the coming together, that's evolution. And um, you really want to sort of surrender into that. Now the other essential oil that is recommended is cedarwood. And cedarwood, if you think about the beauty of the cedar tree, the cedarwood tree, it's a very stable tree with deep, deep roots. So this cedar wood essential oil is going to provide you with a lot of support for the changes that are going on during September for your own personal growth and for your own personal nurturing. Okay, we've covered September. I have three more planets that I would like to talk about before I give you just a hint 
about 2020 and what's coming up for that, okay? Now, I told you earlier that the um, we are currently June, right through October into November is about the idea of conservatism. By the October month, maybe even mid month, um, we're gonna start to lean in toward stewardship. So the energies of October for 2019, um, in the book, the Energy Almanac, you are going to see we wrote about the phoenix takes flight. So think about the phoenix and everything that means. It's that big bird rising up out of the flames. And what does fire do but transform us, right? So the month of October of 2019 is really, really about transformation. And um, during the month of October this year, we have a lot of planets that are showing up under the sign of Scorpio. And Scorpio is the is the zodiac sign of passion and emotion and secrecy, believe it or not. Uh, sensuality is a very key word around the, uh, the Scorpio zodiac sign. And all of this is going to at, uh, be at play in October. So October, be thinking about transforming fear. We always wanna make this positive. There's so much growth to be attained during these time periods. This is about transforming your fear. Where am I scared to show up? Where am I scared to address my health? Where am I scared to speak to that person? This is about transforming and transmuting your fear. You will feel it in October and you are going to bypass that. You're gonna evolve yourself. You're gonna take the work you did in September and you're gonna apply it in October. This is really about releasing uh, codependence and becoming interdependent within yourself, relying on your intuition, relying on that heart energy. We remember there's a lot of heart uh, knowledge at play, a lot of heart communication going on within you if you'll just listen to it. We have a Mercury retrograde showing up during the month of October and it's really, I will say, pertinent that during this month, you look to change your perspective about yourself, about your surroundings, and what's going on for you. It's a great time to go deep. That Scorpio personality is deep. And there's so much Scorpio energy going on in 2019 that you want to go there yourself. Now, what do we have for essential oils? Uh, the key word, I want to start with the key word. The key word for, 20, for the October energy is transformation. That phoenix rising is about transformation. So keep that in mind for that month. Write that on your calendar. If you don't have the energy almanac, go put it on your calendar, okay? Um, so ginger oil is recommended if you put a couple of drops with your carrier oil onto your feet. Um, if you're feeling stuck and you're not sure how to move through that, um, ginger oil will be very good for you and juniper berry is also another essential oil and this is really going to be a key oil for us during october because it's going to be about helping release fear that juniper berry is going to help with the release process that you're going through um a third essential oil that i'm noticing right now is actually lemon oil and the lemon oil is going to bring us some focus and some concentration. As a coach, I really like to recommend to people that they are journaling um, and, and journaling from the positive perspective. So if this, since the month of October is going to be bringing up a lot of fear, I would encourage you to be journaling things that will propel you into your amazing future. So if you had no stories about yourself, who could you be and what could you receive? Isn't that a great question? If you had no stories about yourself, who could you be and what could you receive? Go ahead and lean into that question during July. Make that your key question for doing your journaling work, okay? Awesome. Two more months to talk about for this year. Next month is November. And 
the title given to us by the astrologer Janet Hickox is Storm Clouds Gather. And in the month of November, we're going to be dealing with Taurus, um, Taurus energy th moving through the signs of um, Sagittarius um, right through Capricorn. So what does that mean? How does that translate in non-astro speak, right? <laughs> so Taurus energy is all about materialistic uh, and beautiful and um, practical types of things. So when you think of Taurus, you can definitely think about money, definitely. And Sagittarius is about that optimism and truth telling remember that Sagittarius personality is going to tell it like it is no filter whatsoever and no boundaries they're just going to speak it so so what might be said around money during this time period who knows I don't know what that is and then Capricorn are like um I like to think of like details uh and aggression isn't the right word but there's a lot of like leadership momentum for business 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 capric uh, that capricorn energy is all business so taurus about money capricorn about business like what's going on there in november that energy is going to be swirling around so you are going to be facing reality and and it's going to be in our face something's going on it might be in our face your key thing to remember is stay in the room avoid escaping what's going on you don't want to bury your head in the sand watch actually watch out for too much alcohol too much food too much sugar uh, watch for drugs all of that stuff this is a time period when escapism is a real thing so that's your either little red flag warning there mind your money during the month of November because there could be an economic hit we're not for pretending to foretell anything. These are not absolutes. Um, because the fear level may rise for a lot of people who are not very aware, it's a great time for you to be that really solid ground. You want to really um, lean into your spiritual practice, the prayer, the yoga practice, the walking, the talking to God, the really leaning in. You want to hone your spiritual practice and go there for um, go there for respite. That's the word I was looking for. Go there for respite. All right. So at this point, by November, conservatism has come to a head, and now we're looking really, really at stewardship, minding those resources. And just as a reminder for those of you who came on the call late, the resources as a human being are time, money health and relationships so steward those very carefully guide them be cautious with them they're yours and you don't want to be frivolous with those okay uh let's see what other notes that i have the the gemstone that is very beneficial for november is the stone that's called ametrine and ametrine is a blend of amethyst and citrine and we had a beautiful uh gem enthusiast do the writing for the energy almanac lisa fontanella is a rock hound and she did some amazing writing and every single month there's a different stone that you can use and hold on to um ametrine will help you in november so the word for november is prepare be prepared okay um and then the essential oils that you want to use for these energies. The first one is cardamom. And this is about releasing anger as well as gaining objectivity. So points of view, of course, matter. Your perspective is built on your personal history. So though you may disagree with the person on the other side their point of view comes from their history your point of view comes from your history objectivity is really going to be key during times that might be difficult so 
um, since November is a month of being prepared, get that objectivity in place. Use cardamom essential oil to do that. The other oil that will be very beneficial to you during the month of November is melaleuca. I love melaleuca. I keep a lot of that in my house and I use it for a lot of different things. But uh, during the month of November, you really want to think about it as energetic protection. Be mindful of your energy field, how big it is, how far you want it to reach, and you want to sort of secure it using melaleuca oil. You can infuse it um, and, and for the whole month of November, that's, you're going to really find that that is beneficial to you. So thank you to Starla for that, for that month. Um, so the, let's see, what have I got else for you? That is the month of November and be the energy of fiscal, fiscal, think Taurus is money and material things. What is fiscal responsibility for me? That is the question that you could work in journaling or thinking about or actually actively practicing during the month of November. Okay, we are creeping up on the end of the year and it's holiday season by now, right? So by the way, since we're moving toward the end of this class, if you have questions, please do pop them into the chat. We have somebody who is monitoring the chats and I'm able to see her responses. So if you have a question about some of this, please do let me know. I'm also available um, through email later if you'd like. But let's go right into December. And the December energy, the title is two steps forward, one step back. Now, before you get upset and get your feathers riled up there, remember that two steps forward and one step back is still one step forward. So we're making progress. And I hope that you're really, whoops, I hope that, sorry, I'm leaning over. <laughs> I hope you're really thinking about this as an evolution of consciousness of humanity but us individuals really matter in that and so two steps forward one step back is still one step forward for humanity and that's one step forward for you the individual too right and what we have going on during december is saturn limiting capricorn saturn is a planet about karma believe it or not so what do what do we as a, a human race have coming back at us that we kind of are going to have retribution for? Those kinds of ideas might be showing up in December. Capricorn is all about business and taskmaster kind of stuff. Saturn, like karma around that. So what's going on? What? What's going to show up around those ideas is really interesting. And, and I hope this is providing food for thought. Like for you, what might play out around that? Think about the big businesses that we have, that we deal with. Like what has been going on behind the scenes that's been shaking out all year long that might just show up for us in December? It's going to be very interesting, right? Now look, a tale is told. When you think about the word karma, a lot of people get, oh, that's all dark and heavy. It isn't. It really isn't. Because karma is more like a story has been told. And what are we going to be, do what are we going to do about that? How is that going to play out? So a new message is really coming forward for all of, of all of us. And I think that's really, really exciting. What is going to be key during the month of December is patience and contraction uh people when they get fearful have this natural desire to just get tight and get in a little ball and hide their heads and and not want to do the heavy lifting and not want to do the work be careful about contracting because um there will be a revolution in our evolution and I think that's really beautiful language for those of us who are so ready to go to the next level in life, whatever that might be for you, there's going to be a revolution in our evolution. So some new insight, a new message, and chances are it's pretty hopeful. It's pretty good. I love that. 
So there's going to be a solar eclipse during the month of December of 2019 on Christmas Day. A big and beautiful solar eclipse is going to occur in the sign of Capricorn, that business-like, business-like planet, uh, zodiac sign, sorry. Um, so this is going to bring some closure to something. That solar eclipse energy is about closing something up and this is Capricorn, this is all business. I don't know what that means. This is an ab not an absolute, this is a suggestion or a potential. There will be some awarenesses showing up and I think that is so exciting. We have so much to look forward to at the end of this year. Now, um, numerologically, the month of December holds some really beautiful energy for us because it ends up, um, the, the month of December adds up to the number six. And I'm not going to go into the, what, uh, how to get to that number six and all the numerology, how that works out. But I do want you to know that the six resonates as a very nurturing, loving energy. If you think of how the number six is drawn, it almost like, looks like a pregnant woman, right? And so there's this nurturing and loving and warm energy of the month of December. Marry that with the three energy of the 2019, which is very social. So you've got family and nurturing in that six and the socializing of the number three. Well, guess what? Be with your family this year. If you don't typically go home for the holidays, do it this year because that's what the energy is going to be very supportive of. It doesn't mean you have to be there Christmas Day, but if you haven't seen your family at Christmas for five years, this is a great year to socialize with your family. It's going to be really, really good. Now, there's essential oils that you're, of course, going to want to lean into. We want to make sure we get to that. The essential oil for the month of December is the oil Melissa. And Melissa oil is very, very positive and um it's going to bring about some very light feeling emotions and we know that when we gather with our family it's not always easy so maybe get that melissa oil going into you before you go visit with your family before you see your parents for the first time in three years right melissa oil will be integral for december as well as the um the essential oil basil which is about rejuvenation and it, you, it can be used also to increase energy. So I love the scent of basil. That's one of my favorites. And I typically will use basil oil in uh, cleaning products for my house. I just love that scent. I want to share with you the balancing yoga pose, um, tree pose for the month of December. It's a relatively easy pose to do. You wanna take a look at that online or look, uh, you can read about it in the Energy Almanac and uh, use the tree post during the month of December um, to get you some, some balance and a little bit of strength as well. The word that I chose as a coach for the month of December is patience. We can't know how everything is going to shake out. There is absolutely no point in rushing to conclusions or to judgment, right? We are having a revolution in our evolution, and it is going to require us to really slow down, hold back, reserve, reserve judgment, reserve speaking, reserve reacting until things play out. The question that you might want to write about and lean into for the month of December, what would it be like to align with the energy of calm? Because I think calm is going to be really important December, as if it isn't enough that we're preparing for the holidays, whether it's Hanukkah or Christmas, there's so much going on. Maybe you're having a belated Thanksgiving. Um, there's all kinds going on in December. And so being the energy of calm is going to be important. Leaning into the word patience, super important. And not rushing to judgment, very, very, very good. Two steps forward, one step back is still one step forward. Okay, so that 
is what 2019 has coming up for you. I want you to also know that there are three, I want to make sure I'm still here. Am I still here? Something is, I hope, I hope that everybody can still see me. Can, okay. She's saying yes. <laughs> she can still see me. I can't see myself anymore. So I'm just going to run with this. Uh, there are three major things. I've done this class a number of times and I've, a lot of people have been really interested, like what can we really do if we do nothing else for 2019? So there are three things that I really, really recommend for the month, for the year, 2019. First thing is faith. Whatever faith means to you, whether it's using the word God or prayer or being in nature or playing more often, whatever the word faith means to you, go there. Develop a spiritual practice. Okay, that's the first thing I recommend. The second thing that I recommend is community. So the, the numero numerology of the year 2019 is the three energy. Three is about social, socializing. And so community is really, really important. Who do you know who is like you, interested in essential oils, interested in astrology, curious about holistic resources? Who do you know who is just like you? Find that person uh, and lean in there. Bring more of these people together. Start a little group at your home and, and talk about how can we support each other when things go tough or get sad or get hard and how can we celebrate together when things are wonderful maybe once a month you want to get together just to celebrate right what a beautiful idea okay unionize people that there's your second tip the third tip and i think it's so key as um as a coach i've been saying this a lot mind your own business and i don't mean that in the way that is negative I mean that in the most loving and positive way possible. Mind your heart. The only business you have is this physical and spiritual and emotional constitution that you are. Your business is your energy field. Your business is what's going on in your mind. Your business is what's going on in your heart. The more often that you can mind your business, the better you will be. There is going to be plenty going on in the world, in the government and education and in religion and all. There's going to be plenty going on this year. Your goal is to stay right here, to stay grounded and centered and using your essential oils and leaning into your faith and leaning into your community. Never mind what's going on around you. Mind your personal business. That's my favorite thing that I love to share. All right, now, I promised that I would just give you a little bit of a tidbit about what's coming up for 2020. And, and this is really good timing. This class comes, I couldn't have done this class any sooner um, because literally we just finished writing the astrology and all of the holistic resources for 2020. So I happen to have a heads up about what's going on for 2020 and there is a strong theme that is coming through and that is going to run a thread through the entire year and it actually began in in not began <laughs> it begins in december of 2019 i think you'll remember that I, a few minutes ago i just said um be thoughtful be mindful before leaping to conclusions, right? The theme for 2020 is respond, don't react. During 2020, there, it, it, it may feel volatile. There's much, much, much goodness during 2020, but it may feel kind of volatile. And the key thing that you will want to carry for 2020 is to be thoughtful, and responsive rather than judgmental and reactive. If we truly are going to evolve ourselves, then we have to pull back, reserve speaking, and think really, really carefully before we um, say too much more about anything. Uh, the 2020 Energy Almanac 
is will be written a little bit differently than this one. This is a month at a glance. You can read an article and understand exactly how to show up month by month. The 2020 Energy Almanac shows you exactly how to show up week by week. So that will be really fun, and you, you can look at that when the time comes. For now, I want you to know about these amazing essential oils that are available to you. Um, you certainly know where to get those. I trust that you do know where to get those. Um, I am Tam, and Tam I am. Tam Bayou is my last name. I am a coach, um, and you certainly can catch me on Facebook. Um, with, with permission from Oil Life, I will, I will make all of that information available to you. But what I really want you to know, and I, I give a special thanks to Oil Life for inviting me to share what I have learned about astrology for 2019. Oil Life carries the Energy Almanac. They carry everything that you need to really live a well-balanced, holistic life through essential oils. And I think it's such a beautiful, beautiful and important thing. I really support essential oils and the usage of them. Um, please, if you, if you need to get hold of me with Oil Life's permission, I am available to you. And a um, final reminder before I get off this call i want you to know that the super moon one more time that super moon is coming up on monday june 17th super moons are powerful portals for creation and this particular portal is about showing up differently uniquely outside of your typical way so you want to journal about it you want to think about it doodle about it create a vision board around what can I do that might be new, good, or different for me? Okay. That is what I have for you. I, be I believe I've covered everything. If I have not, please take a minute and let me know what else I can provide for you. Um, it has been a really fun class. It says great class, Tam. Thank you very much for that. I really have enjoyed showing up for you. Please reach out at any point in time. It's been my pleasure to serve you this evening. Thank you all for having me. I'll wait for just a minute in case there are questions.